thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for inviting me to the uh, uh, to this uh, conference on the future of technologies. Um, and uh, greetings from London. I'm sorry I can't be there, but uh, Ann Arbor is a very nice town, but uh, unfortunately, sort of previous schedule conspired against my being able to come. I should say that uh, I first came to Ann Arbor at the University of Michigan um, in 1974 to visit Waldo Tobler when you had the geography department there. Uh, so it's 36 years ago, uh, and it's still a very nice place. Anyway, let me, let me kick off and um, say a few things about the future of technology. That um, uh, Clearly, this is a session devoted to the nature of technology, and I'm well aware that during the day that you're talking about the big picture in many aspects, and that in some senses, um, examples really support these issues about the big picture. I will actually... Um, introduce a series of examples from our work here in uh, in London, um, in, in uh, my bit of uh, uh, of the uh, Bartlett School, which mainly deals with um, the application of uh, digital technologies to uh, cities at the more aggregate level rather than the urban design level or the building level. Um, and I'll, I'll illustrate that, those examples to show you the kind of variety, I think, that really relates to this whole question about the nature of technology and the way it's beginning to inform us um, about thinking seriously about uh, critical urban questions. Okay, so if we could have the next slide. Um, the next slide, um, yeah, okay, give, gives, gives a picture, really, of what I, of the examples I'll talk about. I'll say a little bit about conventional models of cities, which really relate to simulating urban futures. These go back a long way, um, probably 30, 40 years, uh, but nevertheless, they're being massively changed by new kinds of technologies, particularly Web2 technologies, the interactive world. That's one thing I'll talk about in a couple of minutes, uh, and then I'll move on to two other more recent things that we've been doing in our group. Uh, one is really uh, the idea of using technologies to actually track what's happening at, at the present and the emergence of entirely new data sets that are beginning to inform us about different conceptions of the city, that uh, many of these digital technologies, particularly tracking, I think, at the fine scale through GPS devices and so on, are beginning to sort of change the kind of questions that we might be interested in. It's been a big growth, for example, of thinking about how people move at the local scale in cities um, in all sorts of issues relating as, uh, to questions as diverse as questions about uh, obesity at the one hand to security on the other. Uh, this is again changing um, what we're interested in and what we consider important. Uh, and then um, lastly, I'll just talk briefly about a project we have which is tagging the material city or tagging objects in that sense, so making the environment interactive. So this is quite a wide um, portfolio of things I'm going to be talking about. Now the next slide um, talks about, next slide please, uh, uh, next slide talks about um, uh, simulating futures, and I'm just going to put, so, uh, on, uh, uh, put a couple of examples on the screen which really relate to two sorts of modelling strategies that we develop in our group. Symbolic models, which are really land use transportation models, of which we have two or three that pertain to Greater London. These are fairly traditional in some sense. And then iconic models. Uh, which really relate to visualizing city form, which are more uh, like CAD models, etc., 3D GIS. One of the interesting things is that if you go back 40 years, symbolic models were quite separate from iconic models in this sense. Uh, and that with the computer revolution and the all pervasive nature of technology, we're seeing the merger of symbolic models and iconic models in some sense in a way that it was entirely unanticipated um, uh, 30, 40 years ago at the beginning of the computer revolution. Uh, and I'll show some examples from London. One of the key issues here is the use of models in an environment which enables participation in some sense. That relates to one of the things I think you talked about this morning relating to digital publics. Um, the next slide, please. Uh, the next slide um, uh, takes us a little bit further. Uh, if you can put the next slide on, yes. Uh, and I'll say something about visualization. One of the key issues is that we're in a position where we can use modern technologies, contemporary technologies, to visualize really every stage of the modeling process in this sense. Uh, and therefore, we can begin to put the model under different kinds of user control. So we can indeed e enable our stakeholders 
uh, to interact with the model in that sense. And the whole medium of interaction relating to, obviously, the desktop all the way through to the cloud is beginning to stretch ways in which we can begin to run these tools, in a sense, that use these tools to inform us about key problems. Um, the next slide, the next slide uh, uh, shows you an example. If we could move the, through these slides a bit faster, we could have the next slide on, please. Next. Okay, so next slide. Uh, this shows you a typical desktop application, the model we've been building for Greater London. Um, it's a model relating to land use transportation, predicting future population uh, related to climate change in London. Uh, that's actually an example. You can see a picture there of, uh, of Greater London itself. That's about 7 million people in that area. It's uh, the little red dot, if you can make that out, is Heathrow Airport. Everybody's had the, uh, uh, the unfortunate experience of travelling through Heathrow. That's on the edge of the Greater London Authority, but the, the Greater London Authority area sits within um, really a metropolitan region of about 20 million people if you stretch it out to west of Reading and down to the south coast. So it's a big urban region in this sense and we're building, we're interested in flooding um, if the North Sea were to rise by two metres, which is one of the predictions over the next 200 years, then a good deal of London would be flooded. So to some extent we're using these technologies to um, indicate how we flood. Next slide please. Um, okay, there's a couple of things. This is really an interactive panel just showing us how we can explore the data. The next couple of slides, in fact, uh, show us uh, visualization of this model. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, okay, so one of the features here is there are many, many visualizations within this desktop model. I'll show you in a moment how we can link it to web-based techniques uh, at the same time simultaneously. What you're seeing there is accessibility. Um, the, the, the hole in the middle, in fact, is our congestion charging area. That uh, The previous slide, the hole in the middle uh, was effectively meaning that if you cross that court into the central uh, business district, which is a big area of central London, you pay eight pounds a day, you pay $12 a day to actually cross it in a car. So consequently, not many people travel by car in central London. It's really like uh, Manhattan. Only about 5% of commuters travel by car into central London. What we've done here is link it to Google Maps, in a sense. So we've let, sorry, Google Earth, I should say, that whenever we generate things within the model, we can actually use other software. And we can actually, you can see the sort of K, K, KML files or KMZ files. Uh, which in fact are generated as we go along. So that's an example of beginning to link different pieces of software on the desktop and on the web in a sense. Now let me just move on quickly to iconic models, uh, our 3D model of, of London. So we can, we, can, we can use this to actually bring even greater immediacy to some of the questions we're looking at such as pollution and flooding. We'd have the next slide please. Uh, the next slide. Next. Okay, uh, next slide, if you could bring it on, will we'll actually show us, let me take it through. The next slide actually shows you the wireframe. Can we have the next slide after that? We'll go through these fairly quickly. Next slide. Okay, next slide. Okay, now that shows you tagging our 3D model to an air pollution surface. Um, okay, and that actually is taking the air pollution surface tagged to the 3D model and that's putting it into a web-based environment. King's College have a, uh, a London Air Quality Network, which is updated uh, uh, on, a, on a, an hourly basis, in fact, from the uh, pollution monitoring stations. Uh, and our 3D models and, and uh, 2D models enable us to actually uh, visualize that data. So in a sense, we're moving from what is effectively different kinds of models, some symbolic modeling of uh, uh, pollution and traffic, etc., putting it into a 3D context and then visualizing it for uh, really public participation on the web. Now, that's a picture of our 3D model again. It's a big model, extends for most of Greater London. There's about 3.2 million building blocks in it. It's an extruded model. And we're actually we've raised the, 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 the River Thames there. You can see the Battleship. We've raised the River Thames there about four metres. And you can see that the south bank of the Thames, that's the Tower of London in the foreground on the north bank, uh, which is towards the bottom of the screen, uh, and so that the north is, in fact, uh, towards the bottom of the screen. The south bank, in fact, is, is massively flooded. OK, let me move on quickly to tracking and tagging. Uh, we're interested in tracking stuff using new digital devices. 
uh, which is relatively new in our group, moving to this scale. Uh, and we're interested in visualizing movement and really um, our programmers are really kind of writing scripts to kind of scrape data off various sites and to display all sorts of things. The most recent thing in the last few weeks is uh, uh, scraping Twitter feeds from the Twitter API. If we can, if we can go through the next slide, um, the next slide shows something called our Twitter meters, uh, where we actually have scripts running which are sampling um, uh, tweets um, in cities around the world. We've got uh, uh, 12 different cities that uh, these scripts run all the time, uh, uh, the server, and, and you can see sort of pictures on the right there of the, uh, of the actual radar, the, the pulse radar. This is the pulse of the city. Tweets, of course, are some sense of noise, but they, it's background radiation, really. And so uh, we've done a lot of different uh, examples of this sort of stuff um, in different cities. And the next maps, on the next, next slide, please. Uh, the next slide will actually show you some maps of different cities where we've actually taken this and put it into some visualization software. So you can see New York, London, Paris, and Moscow. Uh, and as expected, the greatest density of tweets more or less uh, varies uh, proportionately with population. Uh, here is New York. In a sense, we put no, uh, uh, we put no physical background on that. And here is London. Uh, giving you indications. So to some extent, the polycentricity of the city is related to that. Now, the last project that I'll um, introduce, really, uh, relating to all of this enormous uh, all-pervasiveness of IT, is actually tagging objects in the city. The idea of interacting uh, with the city, instrumenting it and sensing it in different ways is very current in many senses. And from that, we can actually look at uh, the sort of various social networks that come from that. We have a project which is tagging objects. What if I, this is a little bit, uh, I know that uh, at least on the programs, uh, Bruce Sterling was, um, uh, is billed. Uh, and his Internet of Things has uh, uh, pushed us, I think, or pushed the, the group in, in, in our units who are working with this, uh, influenced them in this sense. So tagging objects. We have a thing called Totem, which is Tales of Things Electronic Memories. We put the next slide on. Uh, next, please. Uh, put the next uh, yeah. next slide should show us. Okay, what if memories can be added to objects? Next slide, please. Um, what if objects could tweet? Okay. Next slide. Tales of things. This is the project. Um, next slide. Uh, and these are the barcodes, the QR barcodes. So uh, some of our programmers are writing software that. Uh, which is fairly standard stuff, I guess, in some respects these days, but there are barcodes that can be produced from the site. You point your device at the barcode uh, and you can tag things. So if you go to the website Tales of Things, there you can see a variety of stuff that's being tagged. We tagged an Oxfam shop in Manchester, apparently. The products are all tagged. Uh, and the idea, of course, is that ultimately they will record memories. Now, uh, this is the last slide, and it just gives an indication of... Um, the kind of variety of IT uh, that is beginning to inform us in this sense, uh, and those are the various websites that, um, uh, if you're interested in, the, in in what we're doing, you can go to. Let me just finish off, uh, and I'm very conscious here about time, 50 minutes. Let me just finish off with a, a few general points. Um, first of all, I think that we as a group are very interested in urban problems of various sorts. I don't, we don't think of ourselves necessarily as being um, primarily interested in information technologies, although we, we do use information technology extensively in what we do. We tend to be branded as a group as IT uh, type people, computer type people, but in fact, if you unpack our backgrounds, then we're mainly architect planners, geographers, there are some engineers and mathematicians and physicists who work with us in this sense. But generally speaking, I think that our, our particular take on the world in terms of technology is that we're interested first and foremost in problems of various kinds. And obviously, in terms of our current interests and expertise, then we're interested in how technologies can actually inform them. And of course, over the years, and I think the picture I've been painting indicates this, that uh, the technology is expanding quite dramatically into all kinds of corners. That doesn't mean to say, in any sense, that uh, there isn't a, a massive complement to all of this, which is um, ideas about traditional thinking in terms of looking at the same sorts of problems. I'll stop at that point, and hopefully that has given you some insights into, into what we're doing, and it, it, hopefully it will resonate with 
uh, material that other authors and presenters are going to present and have presented during the day. Thanks very much.